Okay. So here is what we're going to do today. Um, before we talk about all this knowledge, we want to first of all talk about is a muscle conversion. So what we talk about here is from a caucus to a muscle. So we say a caucus to muscle conversion. Which means how from a caucus to generate a muscle. And there is a different steps. We want to talk about each steps given an overview picture. So let's say I have a cattle. Now obviously the cattle will be killed. Okay, so we say it's a slaughter. You can say killing, bleeding. Okay, then what happened? It's gonna bleeding. Now eventually all the blood will be gone. So we have a terminology for that called the exacquisition. Once the blood is gone, the blood carry on the energy, so what is gonna happen? The energy basically is depleted. So no energy. So what that means? The ATP is gone. Now, temporary in your body, in the animal carcass body, when they just harvested or slaughtered, there is a potentially a little bit of creatine phosphate cell. So what happens, the body will be temporary from ADP to generate ATP. But it's very temporary. Later on, all the ATP will be gone. Now once all the ATP will be gone, what's going to happen? In a very short period of time, the glycogen from the liver, they will go through glycolysis and followed by a fermentation. And this fermentation, we typically say it is a muscle fermentation. Then after fermentation, what kind of the products will generate? It's lactic acid. Basically lactic acid or other acid products. Then what's gonna be happen? A very obvious phenomenon will be generated. Is pH going to be significantly decreased? Usually decreased from a normal 6.8, 7.0, neutralized pH, neutral pH to what's the level? 5.4 to 5.8. Now remember this curve. Do you remember? Do you remember this curve? We call it when we talk about the water. Is that right? The pH level right here. This is water holding capacity. And be careful. If for some of the reasons the muscle pH decreased too much, decreased to 5.0 or 5.2, what happened? There is a very low level of the water holding capacity. Sorry. The y axis should be water holding capacity, and the x axis should be the pH. Then, at that time, what happened? No water is held up. Then what happened? The refraction of the light will become very pale. That's called PSC problem, especially in the pork. So most of the normal pH will be right or like here. That is 5.4 to 5.8. Now we also mentioned the pH cannot be too high. If it's more than here, what's gonna happen? DFD gonna comes out. And here, which is PSC, DFD typically is for uh, beef products. Now, these things actually very related to the pre-harvest uh, animal welfare, which means the stress control during the transportation. Now, this is another topic we'll mention on Thursday when we use the science. So just want to let you know what happened is the pH will be dramatically decreased. The second thing what will happen. Now, of course, the muscle is going to become tough, is that right? Very tough. Because the acting 
and then by also seeing class bridge generate. Or we say crossing link created. Now why do we create created? Because there is no ATP. Acting in the Biosyn cross bridge always generate when you do this action. Contract, releasing, relaxing. What we can do because there is energy there. Here when the, when the animal is died or slaughtered, the ATP is gone. So there is a permanent cross link will be generated. Once this permanent active melting cross link generated, what is going to happen? Riga mods. We just say RM. What this means? Coming from a Latin language. Uh, it's called stiff of this. Or you can understand top of this. And we will mention this rig uh, rig mods uh, very detailed. So these are the things basically going to happen when the carcass to a muscle conversion transfer to a muscle. Now regarding the tenderization, of course the pH is important. But more important is this active melting cross link. It's a permanent active melting cross link. Lots of the things we can talk from there. Now, before we talk about here, so let's using some blocks here. This is going to be block right here. Okay. Before we talk about the detail, we need to talk about a basic is a muscle structure. And from outside to inside, there we will explain to you active mouse and cross link. What's that? Okay, what is going to be the muscle looks like? Okay, I will draw right here. Let's say there is a bone. Okay, this area is a bone. Now you have a little bit here. Is a tendon. And then the tender will be extended here, they'll have a muscle. The muscle usually I will draw very large, like this. Now what are going to be the stuff here? Now of course you have a nerve. Nerve usually will be carried on so-called neurological transmitter. Now of course you need a blood. Okay, so you have a vein there. And, uh, Archery, you have those stuff. Okay, of course you have a bloodstream, everything. Okay, there's the muscle. What gonna be the muscle looks like? You have these type of large stuff there. Muscle looks like like is a layer after layer is a bundle. Okay, so let's take out the worm of them. You're gonna be become like this. Then we can separate it like this. Then we can go ahead to separate one more. Like that. Okay, more inside. Like this. Then, like that. So you can see that it's layer by layer, layer by layer. It's like a bundle. Now they are packaged by different type of the membrane system. What are they? The first one. It's called perimyosin. Now each of these, we take it out. We call it a muscle bundle. Now the muscle bundles is also have a membrane system there. That is called MP. Mousing. Then you go inside. You start to show something, okay, which is a muscle fiber gonna come out. So right here, it's packaged by a endomousing. So that's called a muscle fiber. That's a 
fiber comes in. Then what is going to happen? This is comes here called sarcolemma. Then go inside, you will see what? Is a mild fibril. It becomes thick and thick, a thin and thin. Then later on, what's the last one? Is mild filament. Now, from here, you can see, once you go to the sarcolemma, this membrane system right here, they will have a special structure called sarcolemma or sarcolemma plastic reticulum. Acronym just say SR. This is a very specific place to storage of housing. This is a very important place. Plasmic, not say plastic, plasmic. So sarcolemma plasmic reticulum, SR, is a place to store housing. We'll mention that. It's very, very, very important. Okay, now of course around here you will see a different things. They will be have a connective tissue. The connective tissue which is composed majorly by a collagen and the collagen will be composed by gelatin. We'll mention that. Now, of course, when you go here, you will see sometimes there's a nuclear cell on the surface. And of course, sometimes when you see there is a mitochondrion there, will generate the energy. And sometimes there's a ribosome there in the inside. Now, you always remember there is some of a fat components inside between the muscle. The, 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 of course, there's some fat there. Okay? And that fat, we usually call it some intramuscular muscular fat. Those intramuscular fat can using a score to evaluate it, we call it a marbling score. And we're not gonna go detail of that. This is talk about is a meat muscle judging. That's another topic. So then you have a choice, primer, uh, all these score talk about is intramuscular fat, it's a marbling score. But I wanna tell you all these structure have impacts for the tenderization. So we will mention these. these. So when we go here, go a myofibro, go a myofilaments. Regarding the myofilaments, there is a two different types of the myofilaments, which is a thin myofilaments and a thick myofilaments. Now, what is the difference between that? The thin male filaments basically is acting. Now, how thin it is? The diameter is basically around six to eight nanometer. Now, the length is around nine to ten micrometer. The thick filaments, male filaments, is that is melty. And the mouthing, the diameter, is around 14 to 16 nanometer, and it is about, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, the, I made a mistake right here. The thickness, the lens here is about, the acting of the lens is 1.0 micrometer, 
and the, the thickness of this length of the mile thing is 1.5 micrometer. So diameter is 14 to 16 nanometer. The top is 6 to 8 nanometer for active. And the one we talk about here is a lens. Okay, this is the lens. Now, what are these things? What is active on the mouse? Okay, we want to talk about that. Now, before we want to talk about, we want to go a little bit of detail, talk about this mouth element. And this is also related to another terminology called the sarcomere. So we want to talk about that. Now, how are we going to talk about that? If we cut right in the middle, do a screen and a scanning, we will see their microstructure. Now, what are going to be the microstructure looks like? In the middle, right in the middle, there is a zone. This zone is called H zone. And the H zone inside, you have a very small zone. That's called C zone. H zone. And right in the middle, there is a line there. This line is called the M line. You can understand it is a middle line. Now the whole area here is relatively dark. So we call it the A band. Then you could be going in this direction. Okay, we're gonna have another zone right here. Same, same distance. What is that? This is the I band. This is also I band. Now, what is I means? This I means isotrophic. Which means it's light, not polarized light. What does A mean? That is an isotrophic. You see the an, an, iso, an isotrophic, which means it's polarized light. So it's a little bit dark, slightly dark. So what is going to happen? The middle of this eye band, there is a line. This line called the Z line. And between the, the distance between the Z line, right here, we gave them a terminology called sarcomere. And you can say this is a micro single unit of a muscle. Now, what are going to be the big chunk of the middle looks like? The big chunk of the middle, you will have these large ones, like a hook shape. Whatever you draw will be like a hook. And then you will see these, these like, thing stuff, okay? Same filaments. The six filaments right here. So out of a couple, not everything. So the thick one, like a hook. They do a uh, alternative one by one. Okay, I can draw another one. So we got this over here. Now what are these stuff? This thick one looks like a hook. Mousing. This thin one, the blue one, 
acting. Now, the usury, once they reach the ragamots, they have a permanent active myosin cross link. So I will say they cross link a little bit. They always cross link. A little, little bit. Okay. Cross link. Cross link. So we're going to talk about these, these things. What are they? Okay. I'm going to move this here a little bit. What are they? So first of all, what is mousing? Just move this. Number one, mousing. What is mousing? Of course, it's a protein. It's a muscle protein. Now, we'll talk about it later on. This molecular weight is relatively large, 500,000. Molecular weight is huge. Number two, the major components of the amino acid is glutamic acids and aspartic acids. What are they, if you remember? We can do a little bit of review. Glutamic acid, CH2, CH2, go C, O, O. Now aspartic acid, NH2, C, H, C, O, O, H, CH2. Uh, As folic acid. And uh, we will say that 60% the secondary structure of mousing is alpha, hel alpha helix. The molecular weight is very high. How many components, which is in a total muscle? 38%. Of total muscle. Now, very important for the myosin, it is have ATPase function. Where are they? The myosin has two structures. If you want to be differentiated, called Mary myosin. Heavy Mary Mousy. And also have a light Mary Mousy. The heavy one's molecular weight is almost 200,000. And the light one is about 40,000. And the Mary Mousy, it has ATPase function. What are going to be the function looks like? When we talk about the ATPase, ATP hydrolyzed become ADP, and phosphates will be released. Now, this is ATPase. This rely on potassium and magnesium in the muscle. Okay, so this is a mouse. Now, I will say this is a hook shape, look like a hook. Therefore, what is then we're gonna talk about what is the acting looks like? So we wanna make right here. What is acting? Number one, acting is approximately 17% of muscle. Muscle protein. Number two, acting is relatively small, a little bit small. So the molecular size, if we're going to talk about a little bit small, um, it is about uh, 
somewhere about uh, like uh, 40 to 50,000. A little bit small. So you can see the out active mouse in cross bridge, the ratio is basically mouse in acting is 3 to 1. There are two types of the acting there. What are they? Is G acting and F acting. Now why write like this G acting? Guru Bira. F acting fibros. G acting is a monomer. It is small, single, like this. We call it spherical. How about the F acting? F acting is very long. Okay, usually it looks like this. A little bit of hexy. What does it look like? That's effective. Very large. How large it is? 40 million molecules weight. Very long. Around 10,100 nanometer. Very, very long. That's F active. Now, when we talk about the muscle protein, you also do not forget about there is another two things very important there. There is something right here, like this. Some curve like that, like that. What is that? Triple mousing. The triple mousing also carry on some of the head, like this, here, like here, like here. What is that? Troponin. Why troponin is so important? You have this muscle releasing and the contraction will relate to the calcium. This will be actually could be accept or release and or connected with the calcium. So this is basically is a knowledge for acting and mousing. Now there's something else I want to mention. This is a Z line. The Z line. The Z line is not empty. The Z line is very crowded. Why? There are so many other proteins surrounded. That's another reason why it's a, it's the same here, okay? That's the reason why the muscle is going to be tough, because there are lots of proteins surrounding it. What are they? Let's say nebulin, uh, called desmin, tidin, and lots of others. They surround the zilla. So when you see this structure, when we talk about active mousing, cross links. When we talk about the tenderization, what are the two places related to that? Is this active mouse cross link right here? And those proteins surrounding the zazila. Those are the something we have to work. We have to do something to kind of relaxing it or, or like relaxing it or maybe break down it that's something we want to mention, okay? Now, I'm going to move to this part. Before we talk about uh, um, the tenderization, there is another thing we want to be emphasized to you. Uh, maybe right here. Maybe use it. I don't want to bother you too much. Yes, about the muscle contraction, 
and muscle relaxing. What are the difference? Muscle contraction, and you need to know which is the calcium will be released. Released from where? From a saw. Saw calamar, plasmic reticulum. Go to sarcolemma membrane system, and at the end of the day, it's a blood stream. It's a blood calcium. When they release it from there, the muscle will start to do the contraction. Now, when they do the contraction, what's going to happen is ATP will be hydrolyzed, become ADP and a phosphate. And this is rely on enzyme, which is ATPase. And this is basically happened from a muscle standpoint, is from a creatine, creatine phosphate. Now, how about relaxing? Calcium will be back to SR. So, calcium will be actually what? Absorbed it. So absorbed it, and then what's going to happen? ATP should be generated. So you need to have ADP and the PI to generate ATP. Now this is also need the ATP pace, okay, in the other in the other side. So by all means, cells, you do contraction, relaxing. You must have an ATP to do it. Otherwise, it will be always like this, this contraction, if the ATP is gone. That's why in our normal life, our ATP become ADP, and ADP become ATP is balanced. You don't have ATP, you're gone, like this. And this whole process rely on a neurological transmitter is, uh, is a cyto chlorine. Okay, so the contraction is a silo chlorine. chlorine. How about relaxing? We need an enzyme which is chlorine esterase. Okay, that's a new transmitter that can be hydrolyzed. Okay, remember in our microbiology class we mentioned. What kind of thing happens is only do contraction. Is cross to the antitonin. What kind of happens only relaxing? Is cross to the embotulism. So that's typically for infants. So we said never feed less than one year old kids uh, honey because they may be uh, uh, contaminated with cross to the embotulinings and what's gonna happen? You're gonna have a floppy baby. So that's the muscle is always relaxing. So that's something else we connected to the other classes. So these are the things we want to mention uh, at the beginning. So I said we have to work on here a little bit. Okay. Then after use a carcass conversion conversion to a muscle, we can avoid it. Is a, a rigmort. Uh, we already mentioned. So we want to talk about that in de detail. Okay, so here we're gonna talk about this viva. But just say or M. I already said it's a stiffness of this for Latin words. What it looks like, what that means. People doing the research, they find that the curve of the right mods is not straight, very similar, looks like our bacteria growth curve. Lots of the curve looks, looks like that. Y-axis is shear force value. X-axis 
is time. Now, they did not do the right mods at the beginning. Let's say you kill the animals, it suddenly become a very tough. No. A little bit of time taken. This one, we call it onset. Of iron. Now, the onset time of iron in different animals is different. For example, in beef, took 6 to 12 hours. Lamb, the same thing. 6 to 12 hours. Pork is a little bit short. Around 3 hours. Fish is short. About 0 0.5 hours. Chicken is also short. Around 0 0.5 to 1 hour. So what do you tell you about here? We don't care about this too much, to be honest. You go order a chicken patty, you never say, I want to order a medium cooked chicken, is that right? We don't care about that. Fish half an hour become tough, and they're good for tasting. We don't care about that, because onset is very short. Beef and lamb, lamb is a big problem. Now, the question is, why beef and the lamb will have a delay started the rigomots? Rigomots, why? We mentioned about this. there is a residue creating phosphate cell. So even you kill the you bleed it, the residue creating phosphates, the ADP will become ATP, ADP will become ATP. So the temporary still can do is a relaxing. And it takes 6 to 12 hours. And what I will mention, this, this time is important. It's very tricky. So it's delayed the start. Now once they reach this cutting edge, the threshold, you can say, they started to do the ragamots, which means the muscle become tough, which is this area, you can say, is acting, myosin, cross-link, going to generate. The generate, 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 and then later on, become very tough. That took some, some, some time. Then what happened? After one day or two, people see the muscle is starting to become a little bit relaxing, a little bit tenderness. That is called reversion of oil. But this terminology is got a four of you. Why? This reversion does not mean the active melting cross link is break down. This is pre this is permanent. What happened is all these proteins surrounding the Z line start to break down. Okay, so this is the, all the things that happened in the Z line. The tidying, nebuling, deciming, all these things start to hydrolyze. So we call it a proteolytic degradation. Now, why is that going to happen? Because in all of, in the muscle, even the muscle has been separated from the carcass. There is an internal enzyme. That internal enzyme is called the cow pen. I want to make sure that my sparing is correct. Um, C-A-L is called a calpans. The calpans rely on calcium. So there is a different calpans. There's a different calpans, which is we call M calpans. That is required only milli Mora, many more of calcium. 
very limited amount of calcium. We have a mu calpens that require micro molar of calcium. So calcium is an activator. And I tell you one thing, even a muscle has been stayed there for a little bit longer time, you can manually add <coughs> calcium there. The meat will also become a tender a little bit. So you buy those like a tenderization powder. One of the components is a calcium. Because calcium can degrade these protein surrounded the Z line. Let the Z line a little bit lo looser. Okay? Now here is the thing. However, you have a cow pain there. It's an enzyme. It's an activity enzyme. I, of course, I have an inhibition. What's the name of the inhibition? Cow plastidin. Cow plastidin. Yeah, cow plastidin. Cow plastidin. This is the amount of the cow pastating is genetic dependent. Some of the cattle will have a huge amount of the cow pastating. What's that? Boss indicus Bree Brehan cattle. This type of the cattle has a huge amount of the cow pastating. So the muscle is very tough. This is created by a scientist. His name is like Zimpomo in Florida, in University of Florida back in 1940s. They do the high breeding of the cattle. They find that this cattle is muscle is very tough. This type of the cattle, you should be avoid making uh, muscle products during the high breeding process because the muscle will be extremely tough. The high amount of the cow pastating inhibit the cow pains. The internal enzyme will be lose the function. So what are those cattle for? In the older days, it's animal labor. They walk on the fields. Even in some developing countries, in African countries, they're still using that right now. Right now, we use tractor, is that right? Before the tractor become mechanicalized, agriculture mechanicalized, they're using these type of the cattle as animal labor. Back in 70 years ago, maybe 100 years ago. Now, which cattle have a lower amount of cow pastelling? You know that. It's Angus. That's why you go to a restaurant, you order something. I want Angus sticks. And the second one is continent. You say, I want Angus sticks. Is that right? Because it's tender. But I want to tell you, Angus is not 100%. It's usually 25 30% breeding rate. They will can label them angus because the cow pastelling the angus is very low. That's one of the reason is break down here. Okay, so that's some something I want to I want to mention for the rigomots. Okay, rigomots is tough. You can avoid it. Beef onset six to twelve hours. Now there's a the problem. When you cut the beef, when you harvest it, what are you going to do? Long time ago, for very small processors, they tried to produce more meat. It's all money behind it. So what do they do? After harvesting, they start to cut. Then it has a problem. What's the problem for them? Cold shortening. What did it look like? If you have a beef product, a cattle, you have this, you bleed it. Let's say you directly to do manually cutting. What gonna happen? This is a normal beef size. It will be suddenly shrink like this. 80% short. This is called a cold shortening shrink a lot and the meat become very very tough so what is called the shortening which is 
The cold beef temperature is ab is above fifteen degrees Celsius, and the ATP still present, and the right mox has not been started. And you started to process the meat. And you started to do the chilling, especially. So, chilling, all you cut, you do the frozen storage. Some people do that. Is less than 15 degrees Celsius, sorry. And the ATP is still present, and the ripe moths is not started. The muscle will be shrink about 80%. That's called a cold shot. How to avoid it? There is three ways to do. Number one, delay, cut, and frozen, or we say cold storage. Let them stay there a little bit. Don't do it immediately. Number two, what do they do? They hang out there. You know when the carcasses they process the hang around there. They hang in a tender stretch position. Basically it's upside down. Easily understanding. This is the leg. This is the carcass upside down. The leg is on the top. And the terminology, I want to make sure my spelling is good, is good. The terminology we call it suspended archbones. 